So, if you want to know why I have a head that looks like this... Continue watching and I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know. Let's get into it. So I'm here to talk about something that not many of you might know about, which is the rare and quite unusual skin condition called CVG, which is short for cutis verticus gerata. Uh, I've seen some videos floating about on YouTube with people recording themselves with the condition. I've seen some uh, cosmetic specialists and doctors briefly talking about it, but I've yet to see anyone who has the condition really talking to the camera about it. And since I have the condition, I thought who better to talk about it. So I'm going to drop some facts, talk about the medical history, uh, possible reasons as to why you might develop it. Um, also, I'm going to talk about my own personal experiences with it and also touch on some of the mental and emotional uh, struggles people might go through having this condition. And that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this video, because I felt like it needed much visibility and if you are someone who has this condition hopefully once you've watched this video you can feel a lot more informed and hopefully uh, not as troubled by it cvg also referred to as bulldog scalp syndrome is a rare scalp condition with folds and furrows and possibly uh, thickened skin that can resemble the surface of a brain. It's mainly troublesome due to its cosmetic appearance and hair growth over the affected area may lose thickness, but skin colour remains unchanged and in most cases the condition is completely benign and painless. The first known case documented was by a French physician called Jean-Louis Marc Alibert, who was the one who coined this phrase bulldog scalp syndrome as he had no clinical name for it. 70 years later, the condition was then termed as cutis verticus gerata by German dermatologist Paul Gerson Una. CVG occurs more commonly in males than females, affecting one in every 100,000 males and one in every 400,000 females. Uh, there's just under 8 billion people in the world, so if my math is correct, um, there's roughly about 50,000 people in the world that has CVG. Also, it's speculated that less women are known to have CVG than men, purely because women are less likely to report it. CVG is classified into two main forms to determine the presence or lack of underlying causes. There is primary and secondary CVG, with primary having two subclassifications of essential and non-essential. Primary essential CVG is when the cause of the condition is unknown and has no other associated abnormalities. Most primary cases develop after puberty and typically occurs before the age of 30. Primary non-essential CVG can be associated with neurological disorders, which can include things like cerebral palsy, epilepsy and schizophrenia. Additional symptoms can include deafness and ophthalmologic abnormalities, and that can relate to different conditions of the eyes, like inflammation of the eyes, cataracts and blindness. Secondary CVG can be linked to abnormal conditions with your skin and body, which can include things like moles, birthmarks, eczema and psoriasis. Also the condition acromegaly can be linked to secondary CVG. This is when there is an abnormal growth of hands, feet or face caused by the overproduction of growth hormones by the pituitary gland. Also taking certain drugs like anabolic steroids and human growth hormones can be linked to secondary CVG as it can mimic the natural overproduction of growth hormones found in acromegaly. So this is an MRI scan of someone who has CVG and these cross-section images can really give you a good idea as to how the formation of the scalp can be in certain cases. So if you have CVG, I'm sure this part of the video is what you are most interested in. Uh, unfortunately, there is no complete cure for CVG at the moment. Um, a lot of things have changed 
uh, when I first started doing my research years ago, um, I was getting a lot of information saying that there was no medication that could reduce the size or quantity of the folds, but there has been some kind of new medication that could be injected potentially, but I will talk about that in a minute. From what I've researched, the main options would be to have surgery. Uh, one of the first procedures that I came across was to remove sections of the affected area, pulling the scalp together and stitching together the opening. Another option is the skin expansion method, and that's when the scalp is implanted with uh, an expander and saline is injected into the expander over a two to three month period and the new skin that forms is used to replace the area affected by the CVG. So now I'm going to talk about the two possible treatments that I found out about quite recently that aren't as invasive. So the first one is subsession and injection fat grafting and that's when fat is taken from another part of your body injected into the scalp underneath the depression to create more of a leveled look. Another option is the more newer procedure that I mentioned earlier, which is to get uh, injection treatments with a substance called hyaluronidase. And apparently that's meant to reduce the elasticity of the skin. Uh, so it reduces the folds. This is a fairly new treatment, as I said, I could only find one study done back in 2019, which isn't too long ago. From the pictures, you can see some kind of improvement after the 18 week treatment period, but I wasn't able to find anything that could show the longevity of the results after the treatment. From reading the medical journal, it does say there is no definite conclusion to be drawn, but potentially this could be a solution. So whilst making this video, I came across a more recent case study exploring the use of hyaluronidase injection treatments, which was published this year of 2021 by the Canadian Society of Plastic Surgeons. And if you pause the video, you can read the abstract to find out more about the process. If you look at the images, you can definitely see a difference. However, this person had very mild CVG to begin with and the after picture pretty much looks absolutely normal. So potentially this shows that the earlier you get the treatment, the better the results, in comparison to the previous images where the CVG was more advanced prior to the treatment. And as the abstract states, the improvement of the appearance had been maintained over the 12 month follow up period. So this is very much looking like a great alternative to more invasive treatments, especially if you catch it early. So I'm going to talk a bit about my experiences with CVG and when I first noticed it I was about 20 or 21. Uh, I was attending uni doing animated film and uh, unfortunately during that time I got mugged by two guys during the day uh, and they just took everything off me. I had all my coursework, um, pens, pencils, all my materials, sketchbooks, uh, camera, laptop, everything was just gone and I never saw that stuff ever again. So I was a bit depressed I guess uh, for a bit. I didn't leave my house for a couple weeks um, but then when I did leave my house I was like you know what I need to change something up and I decided to get my hair cut. Um, I had a bit of an afro that I was in love with at the time but I felt like I just needed to do something to shed this negative experience that I had off of me. So I got my hair cut and the first thing I noticed was a couple indentations in the sides of my head um, up here and, um, and, and one at the crown and it was very very um, small you could hardly notice it you could hardly feel it but I I knew there was a difference and it didn't hurt so I just thought nothing of it and just left it so fast forward three or four years later I'd grow my hair back out uh, but there were changes that had happened to my scalp um, the indentations felt more uh, deeper and linear than before when I would uh, touch my scalp with my fingertips 
So at this point, I was getting worried. I didn't know what was happening to me. So as you do, I went on Google and started like typing away uh, things like lumpy head and skull indentations. And I was getting results back saying that uh, a skull indentation could be caused by trauma, cancer, or some kind of bone disease. So now I'm thinking I have cancer in my head and that my skull is slowly disintegrating and caving in on itself. So uh, I end up going to the doctors to try and get some help with my GP and he didn't know what it was and he ended up referring me to a local hospital. So uh, they inspected my head and they said everything looks pretty much healthy besides the indentations and that I should have nothing to worry about. So um, I ended up leaving the hospital with no idea still as to what was going on with me. In retrospect, I should have asked to have been referred to a dermatologist, but I didn't know that this was a skin thing and not a cranial bone thing. And uh, also the doctor's lack of interest or concern um, kind of made me feel like I didn't want to bother them, which shouldn't have been the case, but there you go. So I decided to dig a bit deeper with my searches and finally came across some articles about CBG and the description of the condition and the pictures that I found seemed to be very much in line with what I had and I found some relief in that because I finally knew what was wrong with me. As I mentioned before, I did come across some videos with people talking about their CBG or showing videos or pictures of it um, it was interesting seeing the discussions forming in the comment sections about how to get rid of this uh, condition, um, either by people who have the condition or people who know someone who has the condition. It was just interesting seeing the different um, possible remedies that could be uh, used to kind of get rid of the CBG using certain oils or creams and massaging it out and at that point I knew that those things wouldn't work I'd done enough research to know that and I knew there wasn't any medication that could be taken to get to uh, get rid of it either but in some kind of weird way it was nice knowing that there were other people who were sharing the same experience with me it was only a few years ago when I actually discovered the work of Jean-Louis Marc Alibert and Paul Gerson Una um, and that was very comforting as well because this wasn't some new random uh, thing it had a documented history from almost 200 years ago so I'm going to talk about some people in the public eye that have CBG Victor Cruz a former American football player who has a Super Bowl win under his belt with the Giants, the team he was with at the time. He's done incredibly well for himself. If you look at the images, you can see clearly he has some form of CBG and it's quite mild. I'd say it's milder than mine, I think. In this image, it looks more prominent and this happens to me as well. Um, when you tilt your head back, your head rolls gather and um, squishify <laughs> they get all squishy and it ends up looking more like a brain it looks more brainified and that's what's happening here from the research that i've done uh no one has seemed to have written about his condition at all no one seems to be bothered by it which is kind of good in a way because that's the whole point it's not meant to be a big deal taha isu uh he is a moroccan social media influencer with over a million and a half followers on Instagram. He travels the world and does different cool stuff. Um, a lot of his content focuses on weight loss and his journey with that. Um, I couldn't find anything specific about uh, him or anyone else mentioning his CBG, but I did manage to find a interview um, that he did and I couldn't understand everything because uh, he was speaking in French with the interviewer. Je comprends un peu français, mais je travaille. Anyway, the interviewer jokingly points out his head several times and touches it. 
I wouldn't suggest you ever doing that to someone with CBG, but then again, I don't know how well they know each other. Either way, uh, his CBG is clearly noticeable and he's still getting on with his life and it's become something that he's actually quite well known for. Evie Oddly drag queen and winner of RuPaul's Drag Race season 11. Uh, I watched this show so I knew a bit about this person beforehand and on the show uh, Evie talks about having a condition called Ella Downlow Syndrome type 3. Um, there are many symptoms to this condition but Evie mainly talks about having chronic pain, hyperflexibility, dislocations and stretchy skin. Um, now, funnily enough, I share the same thing with having the stretchy skin. There's a moment when uh, she stretches the skin on her face, which I can pretty much do. Uh, I've always been able to do this. I've always thought this was normal. Apparently not. But uh, it doesn't hurt and it just goes back to being normal like nothing happened. And also they uh, squish their head together showing their kind of C CBG folds, which I did earlier. Um, so after I saw that, I was thinking maybe I had EDS and that maybe um, CBG was one of the symptoms. But from the research that I've done, there doesn't seem to be a connection between the two. Um, but I feel like it could be possible. Hopefully you can draw some inspiration from this. I think it's really important to see people who have the condition winning at what they do in life and hopefully that can encourage you no matter what walk of life you're on. As far as I'm aware all three of these people can grow their hair to conceal their CBG but a lot of the time they choose not to and that also inspired me to take the dive and cut my hair low more regularly so I could get used to the feeling of my head being exposed and a lot of the time I'm not feeling it and I just really want to wear a hat um, most of the time to be honest uh, but I do feel like I have been making a lot of progress feeling better about the way I look. Out of all the articles and medical journals that I had read there was one in particular that really stood out for me and was one of my favourites and this particular journal was one of the more older ones from the 1920s and this particular case was recorded here in the UK and the patient was examined at the East Suffolk and Ipswich Hospital. And within this brief article with the doctor expressing his findings, the thing that stuck with me the most was what he had written towards the end where he says, incidentally, this patient is a quite intelligent youth being an apprentice engineer. Seeing those words really did bring back a sense of humanity to this person I was looking at because when I did look at the picture, it did remind me of those old circus sideshow freak images that were taken back in the day and even though I consider myself to be quite accepting there can sometimes be a trace of this societal conditioning as to what is more visually acceptable and for a moment you forget that there's a person there that has feelings desires aspirations and despite me now having my own physical abnormality seeing those words really gave me a moment to identify my own initial prejudices and to really check myself when judging someone by their appearance which is something that I am always reminding myself to be mindful of. I thought I should add these images here as well as these are some of the most recent documentations of CVG that I came across this year of 2021 uh, which I found on a Spanish dermatology blog back in January. Uh, so this case was documented in Malaga, Spain the patient is in his early 30s, he's a kindergarten teacher, and no one else in his family has CVG. So it was just really interesting for me to read about someone else and their experience with the condition. Throughout doing my research, I came across people who had accepted their CVG and just saw it as something that was a part of who they were. But a lot of people hated the condition and really felt like it was damaging their confidence and self-esteem. I saw comments in different places saying things like, I'm losing my confidence looking in the mirror, it has affected me really badly, I'm super insecure about my head folds, my scalp is ugly, I need to fix it, it has really taken a toll on me mentally. And I really felt for these people because I could actually relate and I know 
a lot of us are experiencing this condition at different severities, but I really felt it was important to say that CBG doesn't define who you are and it doesn't define who I am. I've seen comments saying that if you have hair, make sure to grow it, keep it long so you can hide it. And that was coming from people who had CBG as well. I've seen comments comparing people with CBG to Klingons. So uh, <laughs> fair enough, that's a bit funny. I could take a joke or two. But strangely enough, the first thing I thought was, well, what if I am a Klingon? You know, what if I am this unique creature from some other part of the universe that's trying to live their life on this planet? And yes, I do like a bit of science fiction. And to be honest, that's one of the main reasons why I like these sci-fi worlds, because in some cases you have beings that are completely different from each other, they're not even the same species, and yet they manage to live and work amongst each other and their physical appearances aren't really that big of a deal. I don't know if I was being too weird or deep with that one, but the only way people are going to be accepting is if more of us aliens show our existence and hopefully there will be less of a scorn and more of an understanding and that goes for any being on this planet that might look unconventional. So you made it to the end, thank you for listening. I hope this video was helpful insightful, educational and encouraging and whether you choose to live with your CVG or get some kind of procedure to help with the appearance it's really important to make sure that you have love for yourself, that you care for yourself because you are a valid being living on this beautiful yet tiny blue planet floating in the infinitely vast space that is the universe. Hopefully that can put some things into perspective. Feel free to comment if you think I missed anything and also if you have CVG, feel free to comment on your experiences and let us know how you feel about it. Um, hopefully this can be a little bit of a space for people to share bits of knowledge and express themselves. Also as a reminder I will be leaving all the links to the articles and medical journals that I refer to throughout the video. So thanks again for listening, take care and all the best.